Hello guys and welcome back to the Zane Investing. AMC currently heading into the weekend. The price is $4.64. We will not discuss the Ortex numbers or the threshold security list at this time. We are aware that we have been on this for 25 days, so we do not consider it to be the primary catalyst. In addition, both AMC and Ape short interest have increased. AMC is around 29% while Ape is around 18%. Now, we have been discussing the next point of interest, which is late August or early September on AMC, and we are all aware of the recent 100% copy. Nonetheless, if you examine the chart on the daily timeframe that brought us absolutely nowhere compared to where we were in June of 2021, that point of interest is more accurate than I initially believed. We weren't simply aligning it with the earning cycles or other cycles that we had mapped out prior to AMC's January release. However, I'd like to show you what I've sketched, as the AMC chart is more than just a triangular flag. It's not just a downward trend line with touch points. It is the extent to which AMC breaches these contact points before it spirals out of control. And that is precisely what I wish to discuss. You can see that I've drawn a significant yellow dashed line touching major touch points on AMC. And these are actual legitimate touch points, not the peaks that you see not where AMC topics are discussed. Okay, you should not place your attention there. This has made it more challenging for retail for the first time, as shown by the increase from 13% to 22% to 20.6 to 38 to 51, which is the point of interest. Now, what I did was take the bars pattern following this rip, copy it to where we are now, align it, and you can see it here. And this would trade all the way out to about here, which means we have this remaining. This will not exchange for the same privilege. It never trades identically. However, this is the duration until the point of interest, and it fits precisely with the current situation. Following that, you witnessed 8%, 20%, and then 18%. Then, on the subsequent large tear, I would position myself for another 50% move. What exactly am I gazing at now? I did not even attempt to elucidate it to you. I'm observing how far the price action breaks above the dashed line, each and every time that I have drawn. This is the level the stock must surpass before market makers, hedge funds, institutions, short sellers, and all the corrupt bastards bring it down, whether by halting it or by dumping millions of short exempts on it. This is when they cast a wrench in the works, and it is all premeditated. Now, even if you went back, I had the same thing prepared and tested it for the initial run and there are the same number of percentage gains raking above the yellow dashed line, which increase until you reach the final point. Now, the last position has a 57% increase. This was an increase beyond the purple trend line, and this journey in June was never intended to occur. This was not intended to occur. They were supposed to maintain the status quo, and had they failed to do so, the algorithms would have reverted to $1.91 or broken even lower. This was never intended to occur, and now they have finally regained control of it. In light of this, what lottery securities are you considering? Why are you informing us of this? The purpose of informing us this is not to imply that AMC will only increase to approximately $7.50. The reason I am telling you this is because this is our opportunity to have something similar to what occurred in June and August of 2022, before AIP was issued when AMC ran 51% and 52% out of the channel. Right, it was much faster. But from the dash trend line, it's fascinating to note that we could have just experienced a significant pullback right here. They stopped it the day before the point of interest, when it was about 40% above the channel and about to break above. Essentially, that almost just occurred. And Adam Aaron dropped something to the point where it returned here. Do you know what he lost? He issued 8 to bring it back down to precisely that point. This will eventually lead us to Kevin's thesis. But before we do that, this is a scenario that you can anticipate to play out with AMC in the near future, albeit not precisely, and contingent on how long this delay lasts and what transpires with the catalyst. This is a possibility with AMC before the next release. This 51% increase will bring the price of the stock to $7.32 which coincides with a recent resistance level. I wanted to discuss the graph, and now I'd like to discuss this individual, Kevin Judge. 
just argued that they wished to dump as many shares on their shareholders as possible to raise capital. Obviously, so that the company could endure and the board of directors and executives could retain their prestigious positions and lucrative stock compensations. And if that stock dilution failed, the company would issue new shares. What if I told you they then manipulated a legitimate shareholder vote in order to dilute you in a manner contrary to what retail shareholders want? Adam Aaron is currently the chairman and chief executive officer of AMC. He became co-owner of Philadelphia 76 ERs more recently. In addition to serving as CEO from 2011 to 2013, he previously held the positions of President and CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line from 1993 to 1996 and Chairman and CEO of Vale Resorts from 1996 to 2006, and he continues to serve on the board. Now, the following paragraph from Wikipedia about Adam Aaron. This alone indicates that he has connections. This guy seems to be designed for relationships, right? He is well-connected. He is dressed in a suit. Essentially observing this, he is a business person. Now, if you come down here, I would like to read you the final sentence of the controversy. This relates to the COVID pandemic and what is occurring with AMC. And the last sentence states, Aaron said, would likely need to step down from AMC if the stock continues to lose. Money has demonstrated a lack of leadership and motivation for enterprises. During this period, AMC lost money. Aaron stated that he might have to resign for the sake of his reputation. This is very intriguing because Aaron saw an opportunity when shareholders began investing immediately after COVID, right? An opportunity to utilize us. Okay, Kevin states that he has an opportunity to use shareholders and the meme stock frenzy similarly to himself in order to save his reputation and bring this company back up. It requires two minutes of your time. In addition, Congress has sent Gary Gensler and the SEC a letter urging them to investigate Feinra's involvement in the stock fraud. Virtu Financial anticipates being sued by the SEC after failed negotiations to resolve a dispute over a company's trading data security. During extended trading, the price of the stock fell. Lastly, the banks with the largest deposit declines during the second quarter were not mid-sized regional institutions. They included J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo, which were the industry titans. Compared to the previous year, the four largest banks by total assets gave a net deposit of $262 billion. Between the first and second quarters, consumers withdrew $62 billion from three of these banks. Banks continue to struggle. And lastly, to close out the video, Citadel has been telling the media that they are recording record profits. Do you know who was also continually telling the media they were recording record profits? Yeah, that's correct. Bernie Madoff overall. Guys, presumably you are enjoying your weekend. Let me know your thoughts on this video down below. Let me know your thoughts on the chart. Adam Aaron, meet Kevin's video. Make sure to leave a comment down below. Hit the like on your way out. Share the video to everyone that you know and press that subscribe button. Check the connections. Love you all.